Hello everyone and welcome to EduSearch Clinics. I am Dr. Gudran Desai and today we are going to continue our discussion on diagnosis of shock. We saw in the previous presentation on how to identify the shock, the very important formulas that we discussed conceptually and practically. So today we are going to continue our discussion on this slide, right? So we have seen the formulas. Blood pressure is cardiac output and systemic vascular resistance. Cardiac output is heart rate and stroke volume dependent. Mean arterial pressure is one third of systolic blood pressure added to two thirds of diastolic blood pressure. So once you remember these formulas, if one of these factors start getting affected, you are looking at a case of shock. So remember the formulas. Now coming to types of shock, let us start with hypovolemic shock. As we saw that it can be due to fluid loss, say vomiting, diarrhea or blood loss, most common cause being trauma. What will happen? The cardiac output goes down, right? And as a reflex to this, remember that this is just volume loss. Your heart is good. So your pump is good. Your vasculature is good, so the systemic vascular resistance is good. The problem is there is not enough volume to pump, right? So, this is a problem which is before the system. And so, what happens? The system tries to compensate. How will the system compensate? By causing rise in the SVR and rise in the heart rate, right? So, the heart rate goes up, systemic vascular resistance goes up. But still, the cardiac output is low because volume is low. On the other hand, cardiogenic shock, okay, this is now a problem related to the heart, right? Intrinsic problem of the heart. And here, contractility is a problem, rhythm is a problem. And what this results is in a low cardiac output, again, the vasculature tries to compensate. So, there is vasoconstriction. So, there is high systemic vascular resistance. Similarly, heart-related problem, cardiac output goes down, but vasoconstriction and high systemic vascular resistance will again be a hallmark of obstructive shock. So now, in all these three kinds of shock, there is tachycardia and there are cold extremities, okay, because of vasoconstriction. So when there is vasoconstriction, end organ perfusion starts getting compromised, the heat is provided by blood. So when vasoconstriction starts happening, extremities become cold. Okay, so this is a cold shock, right? When we say low volume, the blue color, we are looking at hypovolemic shock. How to differentiate? Low volume will result in low CVP or central venous pressure. Clinically, low jugular venous pressure, right? So, when we are talking of hypovolemia, volume loss, the CVP will be low and GVP will be low. Remember that all of these shocks will have tachycardia and cold extremities. Step by step, once you have identified the shock, you are looking at type of shock, you look at the extremities, they are cold, there is tachycardia, you are looking at one of these three types, what you look at is the JVP or the CVP. If it is low, you are looking at hypovolemic shock. Whereas in cardiogenic and obstructive shock, there is volume accumulation, right? So, JVP will be high or if you have measures of CVP, CVP will be high. So, looking at volume accumulation. Now, this with muffled heart sound is basically obstructive shock, right? So, if the heart sounds are muffled, this is basically the triad, Bex triad also of obstructive shock. Muffled heart sound, you are looking at cardiac tamponade or constrictive pericarditis. In cardiogenic shock, you are looking at disease specific features, right? So, a very simple differentiation of hypovolemic shock versus cardiogenic and obstructive shock in one limb and how you can differentiate them very easily by using your stethoscope. Now, what are the causes of cardiogenic and obstructive shock? That is something that we need to see. So, cardiogenic shock, the most common causes are myocardial infarction or heart attack in common language, severe valve disease, myocarditis, arrhythmias, decompensated heart failure. 
Coming to obstructive shock, the obstruction can be due to cardiac reasons, basically pericardial reasons, tamponade and pericarditis. Pulmonary lesions, like I said, if the lungs are affected, the heart gets affected, it's a complex relationship. Pulmonary embolism, pulmonary hypertension, tension, pneumothorax. Other cause of obstructive shock is IVC obstruction. So all of these can lead to obstructive shock, right? So this is basically the types of shock, hypovolemic shock, cardiogenic shock and obstructive shock. When we summarize this, volume loss leading to hypovolemia, cardiac problems leading to cardiogenic shock, pericardiac problems leading to obstructive shock. Now coming to distributive shock. Okay, We are looking at septic shock or vasodilatory shock, neurogenic shock, anaphylactic shock, hypoadrenal, mixed edema, beriberi, end organ failure and Toxins. This is dry, but the extremities when warm, it signifies a neurogenic shock. Okay. So, in distributive shock, bradycardia, which is seen only in neurogenic shock. So, remember bradycardia with warm extremities. Okay. Low systemic vascular resistance because the nerves have been affected. So, the vessels start dilating. So, that is why it is known as a vasodilatory shock. When the vessels are dilated, the extremities are warm. Okay. So, bradycardia is classical marker of neurogenic shock. Very commonly asked question, very important to remember. Low systemic vascular resistance and low cardiac output. On other hand, with low SVR and low cardiac output, if the extremities are cold and if you do serum cortisol, it will be low. Then we are looking at hypoadrenal shock. In this shock, you will have tachycardia, but there is low SVR, low CO, or cold extremities and low cortisol. Tachycardia with warm extremities, high cardiac output is seen in early septic shock. Okay, But when sepsis is florid, you will see tachycardia and cold extremities with low systemic vascular resistance and low cardiac output. So, you can see that there are very minor differences between all this. So, if you have warm extremities and dry patient, neurogenic shock and early septic shock. If you have cold extremities and dry patients, you have hypoadrenal shock and late septic shock. All of them will have tachycardia other than neurogenic shock, which has a bradycardia. This is because of absence of compensation of the vasculature which happens due to the nerves which are affected in neurogenic shock. So now once you understand the type of shock that you have there are some specific management points that you need to understand. Some of them are generic that means that you have to do them regardless of the type of shock and then some of the management options are such that you have to treat the etiology and stabilize the patient. So this is the article that I was talking about. It has come recently in 2024 and very nice article on understanding the various management options with generic as well as specific management options based on type of the shock. We will discuss this in detail in the next part of this video. Thank you.